restaurant. I've been doing this channel project thing for almost 10 years now, and in that time I have accumulated a lot, a lot of random, trivial knowledge about various Super Nintendo games. Some of it is useful, and some of it isn't. So I decided to make something where I cram as much of that trivia as I can into one 10 minute video. These could be things I learned while playing, things I learned while going through a guide or an instruction manual, or just something I stumbled upon somehow while doing research, but for whatever reason didn't fit into any other video until now. Some of what I'll go over here is interesting, but to be honest, some of it is pretty boring. Either way, this information has no place else to go. You ever see those videos where it's like, 10 minutes of random facts? Well, this is that, but it's all about Super Nintendo games. You've heard of hidden gems? Now let's talk some hidden factoids. I'll start by giving an example of something potentially useful with Secret of Mana. My older brother owned this game when I was a kid, so naturally he never let me play it. I had to wait until he left the house. But when he did, I remember spending a lot of time screwing around with all the options. If you go into the controller edit, you actually have the option of, uh, flipping the controller upside down? Huh, what's with that? Well, it's kind of a makeshift way of allowing the controller to play left-handed, where you use the D-pad for your right thumb and the face buttons for your left. There's a surprising number of games that have this option. Top Gear has it, here at the menu before you race, and even games like Kid Clown and Crazy Chase have it. So if you ever wished you could switch thumbs and use your right thumb for the D-pad, then you might find these options useful. Now, to give some examples of some trivial stuff that's not as useful, and oh man, do I have tons of that. Like in Paperboy 2, if you're used to Paperboy on NES like I am, it can be frustrating to try and wrap your brain around throwing papers to both sides of the street. It turns out, you can just use L and R. Huh. Or check this out, in Run Saber, you can pause the game at any time and press the select button to switch your character's color scheme. How about that, huh? Huh? Or in Wing Commander, the flying can be pretty stilted in this game, but you can use L and R on the second controller to do a barrel roll, which is a big help toward avoiding enemy fire. Okay, that one is actually kind of cool, and it comes in handy. But hey, did you know that both NFL Quarterback Club games can support up to five players? All you gotta do is use the multi-tap along with another controller in the second controller port. The real trick is to find four other people that would actually want to play a football game that's nearly 30 years old. There's also some stuff out there that's just not very well known and speaks to the depth of certain games, like in Link to the Past, in Kakariko Village, there's a house in the northwest corner. You'll pick up a pot and underneath will be a chicken. Huh, what the hell's this guy doing here? Well, if you've got the magic powder, sprinkle a bit and the chicken will turn into a woman. A woman that doesn't seem to like you very much because, uh, you've been making fun of her chicken friends, I guess. Or maybe she's referring to you hacking at them with your sword for 20 straight minutes. Anyway, she wants to go back to being a chicken, and that's all she has to say, and you can't talk to her again. And if you leave and come back, she's a chicken again. So hey, everything works out. One really useful mechanic that's shown up in a few games is an option called Couple Mode, and it's most prominently featured in the game Poppin' Twin Bee, which only saw releases in Japan and in PAL regions. This is a multiplayer game mode, and when Couple Mode is turned on, that will focus most of the enemy fire on Player 1's ship, so if you're playing with a second player who's less experienced, this is perfect for them. Yeah, the game is still crazy and chaotic with stuff flying around everywhere, but Couple Mode definitely eases the difficulty a bit for a second player, which is a really nice feature to have. I wish more games had this, and if you happen to know any other 16-bit games that have this feature, let me know in the comments. Here's a really handy tip on the game Uniracers that's buried in the instruction manual. For many folks, this game can be tough to get the hang of because things happen so quickly, and it can be tough to know when to try a trick to build up speed, because you're constantly reacting to the track changing. Well, there's an easier way to approach this game. It's a simple matter of paying attention to the colors of the track. When you're riding on a section that's made up of blue and green, that's considered a normal track section, where you can feel free to do flips and other stuff to try and go faster. When you start to see red, that's a signal that the track is about to change, so don't pull any tricks and be ready to adjust and head into another direction. Yellow means a shortcut is available, and that usually means a well-timed jump can place you further ahead on the track. There's lots of other colors too, which signify all sorts of other tricks you can do, like these 180 loops where you hold the L button and tap left or right to do a twist in mid-air. I found all this stuff to be extremely useful. Uniracers is a lot more fun once you learn to read the tracks. 
Here's another weird bit of game trivia, this time involving Star Fox, and this game has tons of weird stuff. I've talked about the slot machine and the black hole in past videos. I've loved this game since I was a kid, but I was always curious about how wing damage worked. Each wing can take a certain amount of damage before breaking apart, and it made me wonder, does each wing have its own energy meter, so to speak? I asked this on Twitter, and I got a response from Kando Wantu, otherwise known as the person who has dedicated a ton of time into Star Fox ROM hacks over the years, including the excellent Star Fox EX hack. And they said yes, and that the wing strats restart themselves when collecting the laser upgrade. So yeah, when you collect one of those upgrades, they can not only repair damaged wings, but they can restore wing health, even if you don't have damaged wings, and even if your laser upgrades are maxed out. The point is, it's always a good idea to grab a laser upgrade, because at the very least, they protect your wings. Here's a truly pointless bit of trivia about Final Fight Guy. This is an interesting title since on the surface it appears that this is just the original Super Nintendo port of Final Fight, just with Guy as a playable character instead of Cody. But the game has cleaned up significantly, the slowdown has been reduced big time, and Guy can wall jump. Yes, that's right, he can bounce off of walls to do a flying kick. Never mind that there's only a handful of walls in this entire game where you can take advantage of this, but Guy is the only character in the game that can pull this off. So, uh, hooray? This doesn't really add to anything in the game, but I thought it was interesting enough to point out. Sticking with Capcom, here's a really useful tip for Street Fighter Alpha 2. If you're like me, you like to remap the buttons in fighting games, like to put hard punch and hard kick on Y and B respectively. So when I first played Street Fighter Alpha 2 on Super Nintendo, after I was done gawking at how this game was somehow able to exist in any form on the SNES, I was a bit miffed to find that the options menu didn't let you map the buttons how you wanted. But I was able to find out later that you can pause the game at any point during a fight, press select, and bam, there's your button map menu. You can do this with any character at any time during any fight. And in case you didn't know this option was there, then here you go. Let's talk some F-Zero, and for me, this is one of those embarrassing things that I didn't know about until years later. Now, typically when you go over a jump in this game, you'll crash against the ground and lose as much as 70 kilometers per hour from your current speed. However, if you hold down during your jump, you will land more gently, and if you do it right, you won't lose any speed and your ship will make kind of a goofy noise. Again, I want to reiterate, I was an idiot for not knowing this all along, and it makes a huge difference on tracks like Port Town, where there's a lot of jumps. Going from something really obvious to something really weird, let's check out Family Feud. This is one of those games that hasn't aged all that well, because in order to get a correct answer, you have to slowly type it in with a 45 second time limit. It gets old pretty quickly. But the way the game is programmed brings about some funny stuff. For some reason, when you put in an answer, the game doesn't look for the correct matching word, it only looks for the correct letters in the correct order. Here's an example. The question is, name something you bring on a camping trip. I know the number one answer is tent, but I can type in an answer like trusting elephant, and the game will still see it as tent. Name something you usually forget to bring on vacation? Well, I always forget my rancid zebra orcs. Uh, I mean razor. Name something wives do to annoy their husbands? Well, they sprout tentacles daily. Or spend, I guess. This is a fun thing to play around with just to see the kind of ridiculous crap you can come up with for answers. Brawl Brothers is a solidly okay beat-em-up, a decent game that's ruined a bit by some absurd difficulty spikes. But thankfully there is a cheat code that allows you to play through the game in the much easier Japanese version. Right when you start the game, as the screen turns white, press B-A-X-Y over and over in that order until the Jaylico logo disappears. If you did it right, the screen should stay black. At that point, enter start, and then down three times and start again. Then you exit, and you see the Japanese title screen, where the game is known as Rushing Beat ran. Here's kind of an odd one for the game Legend. It's an average beat-em-up that's very much on the slow side. The American version of this game isn't all that great. You can find much better if you're looking for a weapon-based beat-em-up like this. But when this game was released in PAL regions, it came with a special turbo option that you can turn on. No code necessary. Just go to the options and turn it on, and you'll see a difference right away. It's not a massive upgrade, but it's enough to significantly pick up the pace and make this game more than just a boring slog. If for whatever reason you get a hankering to play Legend, these days, make sure it's the PAL version with the turbo mode. 
Finally, let's end with a really weird one. Metal Warriors is a fantastic game where you fly around as a mech and blow stuff up, similar to Cybernator, but there are two key differences between those two games. The obvious is that Metal Warriors has a one-on-one -on -one multiplayer mode, but the other is that it has an unlockable basketball mode. To access this, start up the game and wait for the Konami logo to show up, and at that point, on controller 1, hold the L and A buttons along with left on the D-pad. And on controller 2, you hold Y, select R, and up on the D-pad. You'll see a new option made up of question marks. You select that, and suddenly you're, uh, I'm not even sure how to describe this. The ballistic is the top half of the screen, and it looks like a basketball, and inside of it is some guy's head who shoots projectiles. Okay? This other guy down here is a Nitro, but made out to be a basketball player, and you gotta find the hoop and score points, I guess. The controls are pretty much the same, it's just different graphics. You can even blow up people that happen to be standing around. Visually and conceptually, this mode is goofy as hell, but it does work, so if you're into Metal Warriors, you should check it out. And alright, that's all for now, and I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day!